Hi guys, I'm Carlo Fernando and in today's video I'm going to show you how to do the Northern Light Glaze combination. For some of you that have been following me for a bit of a longer time, you may know that I've already made a video about this in the past. That video is more than three years old, so I thought it would just be time to make a new version of it because a lot of people are still watching that video. The Northern Light Glaze combination is a combination where I use different glazes from Potter's Choice from Emiko. And I layer the glazes on top of each other so that they melt together when they're going into the kiln and they give kind of a northern light effect in the end. In this video I will be glazing three different mugs with three different variations of the northern light glaze combination. The mugs have been basically fired, that's quite important. I fire them at 1020 degrees celsius and the glazes that I use are as a base obsidian and then I have three colors that I put on top of obsidian and those are indigo float, smoky mellow and seaweed and I will use them in different combinations to make the three variations. So without any further ado, let's get started with the glazing. As I said, I'm going to start off with obsidian, which is the base of the Northern Light Glaze combination. And before I start glazing, I always make sure to steer my glazes very well. Then this is the brush that I like to use, it's a big fan brush. I like how wide it is because this just makes the glazing go quite fast and also makes it easy to apply the glaze with an even thickness. And then I start applying this glaze. I apply three coats of obsidian onto every piece that I'm going to do. And I personally like to start off with the inside of the mug, so I make a circular motion and I start at the bottom and then I glaze the inside all the way up to the rim and then I like to glaze the top part of the mug on the outside as you can see this way it's easy for me to hold it while glazing it and then I also immediately glaze the handle and while I was glazing the handle the top part of the mug had already dried enough for me to be able to hold it there so I just hold it at the top and then I glaze the bottom part and that is how I apply a coat all over a mug. It's important to let the glaze dry in between coats and you can just let it rest for some time before it's dry. But sometimes I just like to speed up the drying process with a heat gun. So if you have a heat gun you can just use this to let the glaze dry a little bit faster. But you could also maybe use a hair dryer or something or just wait a minute. And if you just want to wait you can also of course just start working on other pieces and glaze multiple pieces at the same time while the others are drying. So here I'm applying obsidian onto the next mug because I will be glazing three mugs in this video because I will be showing you three different variations. And just like that I apply two more coats, so I apply three coats on all of the mugs. I've also tried this with just two coats, but when I just apply two coats for obsidian you can still see the clay through the glaze a little bit and I like it to be very dark and very black and not see through, so that's why I always apply three coats. And then when I've applied obsidian to all of the mugs it's time to start using some color. So I first of course stir all of the glazes, which is very important, don't forget that. The first glaze that I'm going to use for the first combination will be Indigo Float. So I grab a fan brush again, this one is a little bit smaller than the previous one, but just depending on how wide you want to make strokes, you can just take like a bigger or a smaller brush. Just like this, I apply an even coat of this glaze on the top part of the mug, and as you can see I leave a little part unglazed at the rim, so that you can still see the obsidian there at the top, I just like the look of that, but you could also glaze all the way up to the top. I'm sorry, my camera was out of focus for a second, and I glaze a little bit further down than halfway. And then I also apply some glaze at the handle. I personally like to glaze half the handle with this color and then when we're moving over to the other color, glaze the other half. But you can also of course just design this in any way you'd like, but this is what I always go for. And then it's important to let it dry again, because you always have to let it dry in between coats. So I tried it again with my heat gun and this time I did that on top of a turning table so that I wouldn't burn my hands. Maybe you should just always do that and not hold it in your hands because the heat gun can get very warm. And then I apply a second coat of indigo float onto the mug as you can see here. Just at the same part and I'm now applying it a little bit thicker than the previous coat. I always make the first coat a little bit thinner because then I'm just like figuring out where I want to glaze it and where I want to put the glaze. And with the second coat I already know that and then it's a little bit easier to apply it a little bit thicker. I don't know if that makes sense but it is how it works for me. But um, it's just important to not apply the colors too thin because otherwise it, it will just melt too much into the black glaze and your mug will come out quite dark. So I personally would go for a little bit of a thicker layer especially with the second coat. And then with the second coat this color is already finished because I just applied two coats and, and not three. Otherwise it's just a lot of work and two is enough if you don't apply it too thin. 
And then after drying the cup again, I start applying the last color of this mug, which is Smoky Mellow. And I'm now applying this on the bottom half of the mug, as you see, with a white stroke. And as you can see, I overlay a part of the previous glaze, and I also brush it down further down onto the mug, if that makes sense. So later on, when this mug is finished, you will actually be seeing three different colors which is going to be the indigo float at the top. Then you have a part where the two glazes are on top of each other, which will give a special color. And then at the bottom, you will see just the smoke below on top of the obsidian, which will also look really nice. And on the handle, I personally like to glaze the other half of the handle and also overlay it at the top so that it melts into each other a little bit there. And then after drying it again, I apply a second coat, which is also a little bit of a thicker coat, so just so that the glaze isn't too thin. And then this mug is finished and after it has dried, I can put it into the kiln. And this is the final result of this mug. So as you can see, you see the nice blue on top. Then you see like a mixture of the purple and the blue in the middle. And then at the bottom you see a stroke of smoke mellow as well. And as you can see I personally really like the black line at the top as well. And also a little bit of black at the bottom. And yeah in my opinion this looks really cool. So I hope you like it too. And without any further ado let's get on to the next color combination. For this one I'm going to use all three of the colors. So I will be using indigo float, smoke mellow and then I will also add seaweed at the bottom. And with this one, it kind of works the same as the previous one, but this time we're just applying the third color at the bottom as well. But just to show you briefly, I first apply Indigo Float at the top, and as you can see, I make the stroke a little bit thinner, so that I will be able to put three strokes of colors under each other, and also overlaying them partly, so don't make the line too small. And I also apply some glaze on the handle as well. And then I let it dry, and I apply a second coat, of course. So then I have two coats of indigo float and then I go in with my smoked mellow again. So I apply this and as you can see I overlay it again but now this time I don't glaze it all the way down to the bottom because I also want to have some space left where I can put the seaweed without any other color underneath it. So I just apply this at the middle of the mug. I personally like to make the lines quite straight, so make some straight lines. But if you want, you can also make it a little bit more flowing. But as you could see with the previous one, the lines can also just become more flowing because it just melts in the kiln. But if you'd like, you can just play with this and make like wavy shapes or something instead of straight lines. And then after drying it again, I apply a second coat of Smoky Mellow as well. And then I take the third color which is seaweed and I apply this at the bottom as you can see. So I overlay it partly on top of the smoky mellow and I also place it further down to the bottom. And when I use three colors I like to use the last color to make a little line on the middle of the handle as you can see here. I think that just looks quite nice and then the colors will kind of melt into each other and drip down in one drip on the middle of the handle if that makes sense. And then after drying it, I apply a second coat and also this time I apply it a little bit thicker. I don't glaze all the way down to the bottom, especially with seaweed. Seaweed does melt a bit more in the kiln, so I wouldn't apply that too thick, especially not at the bottom if I were you, because otherwise it can melt onto your kiln shelf. And then this is the final result. So as you can see, you have a lot of different colors that melt into each other and in my opinion, it looks really nice. And then we already go over to the last mug. For this mug I'm going to use smoky mellow and seaweed. But this time I'm going to show you that you can also apply two strokes of different colors onto the mug. So as you can see I apply the smoky mellow at the top. And I again let leave a little bit of space at the top for the obsidian. And then I also make a line further down at the mug and I keep quite a big stroke unglazed in between. So that I can overlay the next color and also still keep a little bit of black in between. And then I also apply this on half of the handle. And then I dry it with a, with a heat gun and I apply a second coat. And as you can see, I'm now glazing it on top of this turning table. You can just always do this. I personally like to do this when the lines are a little bit thinner. Because that way my hands are not in the way and it's just easier to keep the lines straight. Or like semi-straight. I didn't want to make them that straight, but you know what I mean. <laughs> 
And just like that, I apply a second coat and I just personally like to do this on the turning table. And then at the same time, you can also use it to try it with a heat gun because this just makes it go a lot faster. When glazing the handle, I do like to just hold it in my hand because then I can easily glaze the inside of the handle. And then I'm finished with smoke mellow and I go over to the seaweed and I apply this partly on top of the smoke mellow and partly underneath it on top of the obsidian, as you can see. And in the middle here, I still like to leave a little bit of space for the obsidian because the colors will melt into each other. Now it might look like quite a big dark line because you still see quite some obsidian but the glaze will melt in the kiln and also sink down a little bit so you can keep the line of obsidian in the middle a little bit wider than you might like because it will become smaller in the kiln when the glaze melts down and i do the same thing at the bottom and then i also glaze the other side of the handle and then i also apply a second coat And here's the final result, as you can see the line in the middle became very small, the black line, but I do think it adds something to the piece if you still see some of the black at some parts. As you can see at some parts it did trip down all the way, but I think that looks really nice. And yeah, I just like how the colors blend into each other. And the last thing that I would like to add is that it is very important that the bottom of your mug is always clean before you put it in the kiln. I often have a little bit of glaze at the bottom here, so I always like to wipe this off and I use a wet bed mat for this. And as you can see, I just hold it on the wet fabric and I twist it a little bit and then it is clean and ready to go into the kiln. That was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful to you and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more pottery related content, you can take a look at my channel. I have a lot of videos, instruction videos on how to make things, how to glaze things, but I also have some vlog style videos where I just show you around in my studio and take you with me. So if you'd like that, you can check that out. You can also take a look at my Instagram, at Calder Van Andel, where I also post a lot of things about pottery. So maybe I'll see you there, and otherwise I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!